with the spring game right around the corner coming up, I thought I would take a second and preview what I'm going to be looking for, uh, things I'm going to be paying strict and close attention to, and give you my two cents, and then wrap it up with a nice bow, send it on its way. Like I always say, let's kick this mule. Through 153 game, our record was Champions. Oklahoma welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Sooner Legends Podcast. I'm your host, Mike the Legend. And if you see in my header, that is my uh, Twitter handle. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, uh, if you don't mind, uh, Hit the like button on the way out. That way it helps push the algorithm of YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, please hit your red subscriber button. Turn on your post notification bell. That way you won't miss anything that I will be uploading about the Oklahoma Sooners or any college football related content. And if you don't mind, share the video because sharing is caring. Well, I know it's way early to be reviewing the preview in the spring game but i'm i'm going to go ahead and jump here and get give you my two cents give you my thoughts what i'm going to be looking for there's going to be tons of it coming up here pretty soon with pg j at unfair sports hall of fame sports media they're all going to be on it like a duck on a gene bug so i thought i'd get the party started and uh give you my two cents okay Here's what I'm going to be looking for. First and foremost, I'm a defensive guy. I love my defense. I love hitting. I love smashing tackles, interceptions, fumble fumble recoveries. I love it all. So here's, here's the first thing I'm going to be looking for as far as the defensive side of the ball goes. And I'm going to start with our newly acquired defensive coordinator, Zach Alley. I'm going to. What I'm going to be looking for is ha has he got this defense better than he was last year? Uh, I'm going to be looking for uh, uh, speed, quickness, uh, nose to the football, eye to the football. Uh, has Zach shored that up with him coming in and being the, the defensive coordinator that we know he was at Jack? at a Jacksonville State is he it has the defense improved over the offseason that's that's the first thing I'm going to be looking at second I'm going to be looking at our D-line how how we've developed in the trenches are we going to use PJ out of bar way more this year is Ethan Downs making that next step he showed us uh some flashes last year and then kind of went silent and then in the BYU game had that interception no it wasn't BYU it was Kansas I'm sorry had that interception that set us up to win and but anyway I'm looking to see if Ethan Downs is going to be making that next step I'm I'm just going to be looking all the way across the board across that defensive line and see if see how we have developed in the offseason well, let's move back to the linebacker position. We all know what <clears throat> Danny Stutzman is. We all know the linebacker he is. My only main concern from him, for him is he was he got dinged up uh, last year and he had to miss a couple of games. Can we keep him from getting injury prone or injured in the season? Because he is our spark plug at the linebacker position. Uh, and he came back for his last year and turned down, I mean, didn't go pro, uh, 
uh, come back for his final season. Um, the other linebacker, I hate to kick this dead mule in the butt, but is Jaron Canick finally going to make the turnaround this year? Because we seen he, we seen some good out of him last year, but we seen some very ugly out of him. Go look at that BYU game. Go look at Kansas. Uh, go look at Oklahoma State. Uh, without Danny Stutzman out there, he looked lost. Lost as a goose. Has he finally made that turnaround to where he's playing at a high level and not doing the things he did last year that made us pull our hair out? But it would not shock me the least, and it might be for the good. I would, me personally, I'd like to see the Kip Lewis and uh, Danny Stutzman package and bring Canik in sparingly. That's what I would like to see. But I'm going to see if Jaron is slowly but sure, or not slowly but surely, but I'm watching to see if Canik has made that. Uh, 360 turnaround from last year and and he had very minimal playing time his uh his uh first year so let's move back to the defensive backs i'm going to be i mean billy bowman you nothing needs to be said about him he he does billy bowman things thank god he came back and thank god ethan downs come back i'm going to be uh watching or uh, if they play Kenai Walker, uh, Seatbelt Vickers, uh, Peyton Bowen, I'm going to be paying attention to those guys. We know what Peyton is and what he what he can do. We watched some flashes of him last year. Has he taken that next step from his freshman year to his sophomore year, taking that next step and really developed and going to play for a high level of us next year? Uh, be paying close attention to him. Uh, Desan McCullough, that's another one I'm going to be looking at. Uh, are we going to use him more? He needs to be on the field. He's too good of a player. I mean, if you go back and look at Desan when he was at Indiana, he was freshman All-American as a freshman. The, the guy is a stud and a half. He needs to be on the field. Same way with P.J. out of Barway. So, uh, that pretty much wraps it up on the defense. On the offensive side, let's start with the O-line. I know we were, were replacing the, the O-line. We've lost Tyler Guyton. <coughs> uh, lost Caden Green to the transfer portal last year. Lost Andrew Raymond Center because his uh, – he – he uh, declared for the draft, so we're going to be replacing a lot of important pieces on that O-line. I'm going to be watching for uh, uh, Jacob Sexton. Is he moving up to that next level? He's already shown another player that's slow, shown some flashes and has has a real high upside to take that next level where he's uh, – competing at a high level uh who's going to be playing center i mean who knows but we'll we'll get a we'll get a preview of that uh in the spring game like i said there's not a lot that you can take away from the spring game because it's just a scrimmage they're not going to be going full speed but you can take away some nuggets and another thing i'm going to be looking at the offensive line is how physical are they going to be when it comes when it comes to when the ball snap are they going to be getting physical and pancaking you to the ground are they going to be up in your grill are they going to be i mean just what i call freak nasties that's one thing i'm going to be uh paying attention to uh another thing i'm going to be paying attention to is uh, tight ends. We we lost Ogden, Austin Stogner last year. Uh, it, I had Sean uh, Onikuno on the show the other day, and 
he needed WD-40. But he, by golly, <laughs> he, he was there when we needed him. But we got some, we got some talented uh, players that's going to be stepping into that role and fighting for that position. I'm going to be paying attention to how Joe John uh, uses utilizes that tight end spot uh, and who who could possibly be the tight end one coming in coming into the season. So uh, let's roll it over to the wide receiver room. What can we say? I mean, I've I've heard the guy, several podcasters about about our wide receiver room. I mean, we got Nick Anderson, Andrell Anthony, uh, Jalil Farouk, Zion Reagans, uh, Gibson, J. Gibb, uh, Dion Burks. I mean, we are loaded for bear in that wide receiver room. Jaquez Petaway, who. Who is going to take that? Who, who is going to take that? Uh, WR one, and I mean, I, I tell you what, guys, if y'all haven't already, y'all need to go watch uh, Dion Burt's highlight reel. This guy is, it'll, he is good, but I think we was hard on Farouk in the Alamo Bowl because of the two fumbles. Guys, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when at that wide receiver room game. You're going to have fumbles. You're going to drop passes. You're going to miss pat. You're going to drop passes that, that hit you right on the number. That's just the nature of the beast. But if you go back and look at Texas, last year at what Jalil Farouk did. Him and Drake Stoops. That final drive. Final drive of uh, BYU. Jackson Arnold calls an audible. Hits Farouk on a, cru on a crucial first down that actually sealed the game with us. So I went back and watched the games last season and really Farouk he only had that one bad game I think he he might have dropped a pass or two in Oklahoma State I, that's the only game I did but but guys quit being hard on Farouk I mean that that's just the nature of the beast in that position and I I I'm thinking he would make a good slot receiver to feel for uh Drake Stoops being gone because we lost Drake to the draft. But I think I think Farouk would fill that position very, very nicely. And uh have uh maybe uh Andrew Anthony and and uh oh who am I thinking? Who am I thinking? Who am I thinking? Andrew Anthony and Nick Nick Anderson as your two deep guys and then rotate uh Dion Burks and those other guys in and out. But that that's that's what I'm gonna be watching for in the wide receiver room is is who's really developed in the off season. And then let's flip it back to the quarterback, Jackson Arnold. Guys, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. And I have been beating this dead horse in the ground, beating my head against the wall. Guys, when Jackson Arnold went in that Alamo Bowl, he played like a true freshman. Yeah, he threw some interceptions. And But this is my opinion and my opinion only. And this, this I didn't even comment on this. I've seen this on a Twitter post that Jackson Arnold is no Sam Bradford. Well, guys... Sam Bradford, if y'all remember right, redshirted his fresh his freshman season, and he didn't start until his sophomore year. Jackson Arnold got his redshirt removed when he went in the BYU game. He didn't get to, he didn't get the luxury of finishing out his season as a redshirt freshman. 
So quit being hard on the boy or the young man. <clears throat> he played at Denton Geyer, Gatorade All-American, five-star athlete. Can spin the ball like it ain't nobody's tomorrow. And uh, and lest y'all let lest y'all forget in that Alamo bow, he hit Brandon Thompson on that sixty-one yard. Uh, go, uh, I think it, I can't remember what route he ran, but might have been a fly pattern. I don't know, but sixty-one yards for a touchdown to open up the third quarter. Hit him right in stride. Now, thank you, Dylan Gabriel, for coming in for our time and need. But you you never would have made that made that throw but what i'm going to be looking at for uh jackson is he had some timing issues and uh mechanics i'm going to be looking at jackson and see if he he shored any of that up because he's had a, a full off season to go back and watch that game find out where his mistakes were and so i'm going to be looking at at, at his timing his uh, and his mechanics and his overall his overall release and all of that. So uh, let's move it back to the uh, running back room. I'm going to be looking at Gavin Salchuk, uh, Javante Barnes. <clears throat> uh, we had a lot of problems with Javante last year, not hitting that hitting that a gap and had his head down to the ground. Uh, I'm going to see if they've worked with him in the off season. He was injured and you, everybody who's, I've never played football. I've just watched it all my life, but from football players that I've talked to that when you get a injury and everything, it can mess with your head a little bit. Uh, but Gavin Sawchuck, I look for him to be RB one. Maybe, and Taylor Tatum, I don't know if he's on campus yet. I don't think he is. But uh, I think Taylor Tatum and uh, Gavin Salchuk, uh, yeah, Gavin Salchuk would be a nice little two-back feature in that in that backfield. Uh, then you got Xavier Robinson, who we've affectionately called X-Rob. Uh, I... I'm suspecting that we're going to use him like on a, like uh, your third and fives, third and threes, short yardage stuff to get a first down. But one thing about X Rob, and I seen him play at Dell City in that, in that uh, state final when he was Carl Albert. He can move. And when that big body gets to moving, he is astounding to watch. But I'm hoping they use they utilize him a lot, like I said, maybe on on a third and short, you know, like your third and five and in, second and five, you know, stuff like that where you got short yardage to get a first down. And then I'm going to be paying attention to spe uh, special teams. Uh, we got that new... Uh, uh, special teams coach Doug Deacon out of San Diego State. Uh, going to be looking how he's developed the uh, special teams room because, guys, I'm not going to pump any sunshine here. Our special teams last year sucked, and I hope and pray that G Freaky's not back there catching punts. To me, that's a, you got Zion Reagans, Jock West Petaway, some quick guys in that room that that's probably going to be second, third, maybe fourth in the depth chart. Put them guys out there on punt and kickoff returns. I G Freaky, he had that one eighty something. Yard run back against Arkansas State last year, and then went to hell in a handbasket, bobbling punts, fumbling punts. Uh, I don't know. It just he didn't do it for me. 
well, our whole special teams last year didn't do it for me. Missing field goals. I hope and pray that uh, Liam Evans, that kid out of Moore, I hope he's our K, our our uh, our uh, field goal kicker because Zach Schmidt. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Last year, couldn't hit a bull in the ass with a bass fiddle. I mean, there were several games that we needed a field goal, and he he failed us. So that's another thing I'm going to be looking for is uh, have we shored up our field goal kicking room? Have we got a guy when, when we're crucial and we need three points that can make a field goal? That, that that's what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, uh, so that's my take. Uh, like I said, on the spring game, you're just not going to get a whole lot of nuggets. Oh, another thing I'm going to be looking at is uh, the new the new up and coming stars we got in this uh, recruiting class, like Stoney. Danny Okoye, Nigel Smith the second, Jaden Jackson. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking for to see what how they've developed in the off, off season and Daniel Locke and Cumini, uh our our British offensive lineman. Uh I've never seen raw talent like his. I mean, he's just got raw undeveloped talent that I can't wait to watch him grow with this Sooner squad. So uh, that's all I've got today. Uh, thank you for hopping in. Uh, on your way out, give me a like. Uh, like I said at the first video, I've got 202 subscribers, and I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Uh, love every one of y'all. Thank y'all for taking time out of your day to, to watch one of my videos. I've got a whole slew of them in my playlist so until we meet again this is the legend we'll see you uh god bless you take care of yourself and don't say nothing that you will live to regret because you can't take it back this is mike the legend we'll see you on the back side boomer sooner Through 153 games, our record was 125, 24, Ooh. 4, 2, that's... Ah!